Plan B had a really good tweet that he put out. I know it wasn't uh, his first one about it, but he talks about the six and 18 months, whereas you buy Bitcoin six months before the halving and you sell 18 months, and it's pretty much perfection. And I had to take a look at that and go, man, if it's that easy, I think we're all in a pretty good place. So we're going to take it through the paces and see if it actually is correct. And then we're going to go over some good news and some other news. So let's jump right into it. So there was this tweet. And if you don't know Plan B, he was huge, 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 huge in the last couple of cycles where he talked about the stock to flow. And everybody started to hate his guts as soon as it went off the rails. And Plan B tried to defend it, and it kind of went a little bit of wonky. And I believe even he has said that it becomes invalidated. But regardless, uh, you have to remember, nobody's perfect. Nobody gets it right all the time. And this tweet is still relevant. And he says it quite perfectly. He goes, look, you want to buy six months before the halving and sell 18 months after has historically beaten the buy and hold strategy. The next halving is in April 2024. Will this strategy work again? I got to tell you, this is uh, pretty good timing. And we'll take a look at it. So the question you have to ask yourself is, well, Rob, when were the Bitcoin happenings? Great question. And there's been three so far. Fourth one is coming up in April 2024. Depending, it's all about how many blocks are being produced by Bitcoin and actually when it comes about. But we got the first halving was November 28, 2012, second, July 9, 2016, and the third, May 11, 2020. So we're going to go six months before and we're going to go 18 months after. And there's no better website than DCA-CC. I've been talking about this website for like three versions straight uh, or three videos straight. And I got to tell you, uh, it's, they don't pay me a dime. I actually have to pay to use their website. It's just a good website. I linked it in the description below. You can check it out. So again, let's take this six months before November 28th. We're going to start on May 28th, 2012 and 18 months after November 28th, 2013. That's the time frame. And you can use whatever you want, right? You can say, well, I'm going to put in $10 a day or $10 a week or $10 a month or $10,000 every three days or whatever it is. And you can put it all in here and figure it all out. For me, I'm a simpleton. And I just put $100 in every seven days. That's what I did because I like round numbers. Not that smart. And you can see right here that, okay, the very beginning, May 28, 2012, it's 100 for 100. Then, of course, along the, along the timeline... You might go up, you might go down, but over that time frame from six months before and 18 months after, you would have crushed it in this first one. Now remember, Bitcoin white paper, white paper 2008, Genesis block 2009, wasn't around that long. If you were able to get in here, hold it the whole time, not lose your private keys, and not get susceptible to all the FUD, congratulations, you're up 50x roughly because you had a total investment of $7,900 and you made almost $400,000. But wait, what about the next one? July 9th, 2016, okay? Six months before, six months after, or 18 months after. So we're gonna go July 9th, 2016, January 28th, 2018. Will it hold up? Yeah, did pretty darn good. So again, you're coming here and 18 months after the halving, Actually, the top would have been December 16, 2017, but you missed it. It's okay. No one gets the top all the time. And it's very hard to get it once. I've never done it. This will be my third cycle coming up. So let's say you do it over here. All right. So you put an A200 and you sold at 76,434. Hey, you're doing pretty good, right? Not too shabby. And then, of course, the next one, the third having May 11, 2020. If we did it again, and we came all the way over here, you didn't hit the top, but you were pretty darn close. And 8,100 to 22,000, which I got to tell you, isn't that great of a return if you think about it? What is that? That's a two and a half X. That's not that great uh, if you do 2020. But regardless, he is right. It is a pretty good plan so far, that plan B put out. And it would check all the boxes for the past. Now, will this happen again? Anybody's guessed. I believe it's uh, uh, Ben and Plan B who say all models, all models are wrong and some are actually useful. And this one right here looks like a B. So it's up to you to decide what you want to do. But again, April 2024 is right around the corner. So maybe take a look at Bitcoin and uh, maybe share this video with your friends. And also, 
not to be outdone. If you want to take a look at some other examples, you can, of course, push those on DCA-CC. But we talked about this yesterday. I'm not going to go over it. Watch the video yesterday. There's a link in the description. And I take you all the way from Bitcoin on different time frames in the four-year cycle, also Ethereum, how much you would get, also Cardano, historically speaking, uh, also Chainlink, which really beat the pants off everything. And then also, just to remind yourself, that Dash Assault, not everything's awesome. And then... If you don't even do that and go forward, there's a great website. It's 100% free. Dan teaches crypto. And I go over some things in the investing portion where I talk about some cycle top callers, which you can say buy cycle top and UPL, time and risk bands, which we talked about yesterday, cycle bottoms, TRMA, well, and reserve risk, so on and so forth, and an updated video of when I'm going to sell 80% of all my crypto and go from there. So that concludes that part for plan B. So let me reiterate, it's pretty right so far on this one. Now, stock to flow, hey, even you said it didn't work out, but uh, who's going to nail them all the time? So let's move past that and talk about some good news and then maybe some not so good news. So this came up as far as good news goes. Uh, just in, watch your guru, $650 billion asset manager Bernstein says the SEC is likely to prove a spot Bitcoin ETF. And who is Bernstein? Well, they are a private wealth management company. Again, $650 billion assets under management. And they're like, yep, it's going to happen. I personally do not believe it's going to happen, but uh, I'm waiting to be proven wrong. So we'll see how it goes. I just don't understand how Fidelity and ARK and BlackRock, they all went with the custody service, which is Coinbase, and said, you know what? We know you guys are fighting with the SEC, but you guys do the custody. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Hope I'm wrong. I will gladly be wrong. But uh, this, these individuals who dabble in finance seem to say that I am totally incorrect. So let's hope that's true. Also, on regulation, uh, Bittrex. Bittrex comes out just like Coinbase and argues that the SEC lacks authority to apply securities laws to crypto and does not delist anything. There was a story that just came out from Revolut. And they started to list, I believe it was Cardano, Solana, and then one other one, which was named as a security by the SEC. So just pay attention to the ones that are standing firm against the SEC and what they're doing. Also, I thought this was very interesting, is that one of the problems with, with Bitcoin in general is the miners. Because the miners, at some point, they have to sell because they have to keep the lights on, right? I know Michael Saylor would sell. that's very stupid, never sell. But I mean... In all honesty, if you're a Bitcoin miner and you are mining Bitcoin, you probably should sell some Bitcoin so you can keep mining said Bitcoin. But there's an alternative, and this one might actually stabilize the market a little bit more. So Bitcoin miners are pivoting to new markets. Here's what we got. HUT8, best known as Bitcoin mining company with facilities in Alberta, Canada, and Texas, is a great example. HUT8 recently signed a contract to provide high HPC as high-performance computing for clients in Canada's health sector. It's more access to the facilities and the people who know the business. Uh, Fellman says, one of the CEOs or founders, cooling, for example, is important in any high capacity computing environment. In both Bitcoin mining and high performance computing, they all have to have that set up. HUT 8, Iris Energy, Hive, and Cypher can repurpose facilities to provide HPC, diversifying the business. Seems like there's a tremendous amount of demand. And also, on top of that, I didn't know this, but this is from Newswire. And HUD 8, they have five data centers, like you talked about. They do co-location, which apparently is to rent out your space to third parties. So if you have servers, you can, they can put it in there in their space. Public and private cloud, managed services to government, private sector, and nonprofit across a variety of industries, including finance, gaming, tech, AI, and more. Why does, does anybody care about what I'm talking about? And it's the reason for this. If you have an alternative revenue stream, and you don't have to sell your said Bitcoin, which means that there is not the sell pressure because all these miners are dumping. It's pretty good because that means that you have an alternative stream of revenue and you don't have to depend on selling said Bitcoin. So to me, I think this is good news and it's a win in that category. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Now let's talk about regulation to where I'm going to applaud what Singapore did here. And I'll tell you why. Singapore regulator bans crypto exchanges. I applaud that. From lending, staking for retail investors. I totally applaud this. 
I know this will not be popular, but just stick with me. This is what's going on. Country's chief financial regulator will enforce a ban on lending and staking for retail, individual traders as opposed to institutional clients. The regulator will also require the exchanges move customers' digital assets into a trust before the end of the year. This is to prevent an FTX-style scenario where their funds are commingled or traded. And it goes on to some other stuff, but it gets boring. Here's the thing. <sighs> Lending, I think, is a mistake in general. For the lending services, because here's the, here's the problem with crypto. It's pretty volatile, right? Maybe in 20, 30 years, it's not so volatile. And then maybe we can take a look at that, I suppose so. Or maybe you get into something like what MELD does, where you actually gain a yield on the amount that you actually put in because it's put into staking services. However, for the vast majority, this is not going to be a really great option for lending. I'm going to tell you why. When you lend, let's say you put up 10 Bitcoin. You need $300,000, right? So if you need $300,000, actually, let's say you need 150000 You have to double, you have to 2x what Bitcoin is actually worth for collateral. Now, let's say that there's a black swan event. Let's say the Biden administration, for some reason, gets reelected. <laughs> Who knows? And then all of a sudden, they come out, and Gary Gensler's like, you know what? I'm going to crack down harder. And you know what? Operation Choke Point 3.0 comes about. And all of a sudden, everything's going down in crypto. Now your Bitcoin that was worth 31000 whatever it is today, is now worth $15,000. Guess what? You get margin called. And if you don't have that margin, you have to get everything liquidated as fast as possible. There goes all your Bitcoin. So the lending process is kind of a, pro a problem if you start to lend out in that situation. Oh, and one more thing. When that happens and they liquidate you, did you know that's a taxable event? And you know what that means? If you held that less than a year here in America, you're looking at short-term capital gains tax on top of all the money that you're going to owe. So on that part, I agree. Lending, not a great idea. That's just me. I could be wrong. Trust me. In the last bull run, I had people calling me a moron because I wouldn't lend out my crypto to get a loan to buy more crypto. And I remember a ton of people telling me that Luna was the next greatest thing of all time and they were collateralizing their Bitcoin to have money to buy Luna. And guess what happened? They lost everything. So good luck. And as far as like staking goes like that, I just don't like it because I like the little decentralized, little decentralization as far as what it is. When you have like a Binance or a Coinbase and they're staking everything, it kind of gets away from the purpose. That's just me. Also, I'm super biased because I have a Cardano stake pool. So take it for what it's worth. I don't like either of them. So I'm glad they did this. Hopefully we'll protect it and they won't get an FTX situation. Anyhow, let me know where I'm wrong on that one. And then also, let's talk about some, some not so good news, we'll say. This is what we were talking about before. Uh, there's a little hiccup with that Hong Kong situation. If you don't remember, about a month ago, Hong Kong came out and said that we're going to allow crypto exchanges and we're going to pull in investors, not just institutional size, but retail side. For a lot of people to buy. And that's great for Hong Kong. But you got to remember, Hong Kong is not part of mainland China. Hong Kong is roughly 8 million people. And China is roughly 1.2 billion. It's a very different system. What is it? One country, two systems, something like that. And here's a little reality check on China. Because everybody thought that Hong Kong would just go over, would spill over China, which I thought too, so too, but I guess not. There's been a shakeup at China's central bank. Pan Gongsheng nailed it, was named the top Communist Party official at the People's Bank of China. The move potentially puts Pan in the running for the People's Bank of China's governor and was viewed as a signal of policy continuation at the institution, which in 2021 declared all crypto-related transactions illegal. Pan made this statement in the midst of an earlier clampdown on crypto. And he said, if you sit in the, by the river and watch, one day the corpse of Bitcoin will float in front of you. He said in 2017, Pan back then also defended regulatory action against crypto and professed to being a little scared to contemplate what would have happened if China hadn't curbed digital assets. And before I go on, I will just say this. Jamie Dimon at uh, JP Morgan, he said the same type of things for quite some time. Now all of a sudden, JP Morgan's getting into the crypto game. Also, Larry Fink from BlackRock said that there was no institutional demand for Bitcoin and crypto whatsoever, and they just applied for a Bitcoin ETF. So I understand that people say, well, people's opinions can change, and they definitely do, right? I mean, even Michael Saylor, back in the day, 
said that Bitcoin was irrelevant and look where he's in now. However, it goes on. Based on my knowledge, no People's Bank of China governor would support Bitcoin, said David Q, chief econ economist at Bloomberg Economics. What happens in Hong Kong is irrelevant as the China mainland usually views Hong Kong as an overseas market. Senior officials outside the central bank are also critical of Bitcoin and the government is instead focused on developing the digital yuan, Q added, which I gotta tell you, makes a lot more sense. Digital yuan, you have a lot more power than you do with Bitcoin. And from my understanding, China really does like to have that over their citizens. Tell me where I'm wrong in the comments section. Maybe it's all smoke and mirrors. Maybe they're just saying that so they can control Bitcoin. I don't know. It just doesn't seem feasible to me. And then also, a story came out. I'm sure you've heard about this. Vitalik Buterin declares he is not staking all of his ETH, merely a small portion. I find this quite odd. He did say it was complicated in a bunch of ways, and his exact quote was, if you stake your ETH, the keys that access it have to be public on a subsystem that is online. For safety, it has to be a multi-sig. Multi-sig for staking is still fairly difficult to set up. It gets complicated in a bunch of ways. So look, uh, I had to tell you that does not instill confidence in me and Ethereum staking. I, that's what I've read so far. This could have been taken out of context. Maybe later in the show, I listened to most of it. Maybe later I missed something and he said, no, no, I was just kidding. I, I, I stake all of it. But to me, when I take a look at that, I'm like, if that's my product and that's my company, you better damn be sure I'm going to stake the hell out of it. And I'm going to make sure that the people that are around me feel comfortable. That's just how I would do it. But maybe if my product isn't 100%, maybe I wouldn't. Just something to think about. Maybe I'm wrong. Which leads me to my last point, which is this. Um, I have to congratulate <clears throat> uh, the Cardano ecosystem. Uh, they are crushing it right now. If you go to CoinGecko and you click on categories, and there's a bunch of different categories you can look at. Layer L1, smart, smart platform. I never can remember where Cardano is. So I'm going to do a quick search and cheat. There it is, number 86, Cardano ecosystem. And you can take a look at here. Here's the ecosystem that is Cardano. I know some people say it's a ghost chain. It's awful and whatever else. Sure, whatever. I mean, uh, it's debatable. I, I mean, it, it sure as hell hasn't... Uh, lived up to its, its potential. Let's just say that. It's got a long way to go. I think everybody could agree that there's a long runway for that. Here's the ecosystem. World Mobile Token, Meld, Indigo Protocol, DJed, Jed, Charlie, and Power, Revoto. If we take a look here at uh, like Indigo, synthetics, stuff like that. If you look over the last 30 days, how it's done, it was at $3 just in 4th of June, $3. Now it's at 376. Let's take a look at 90 days. Not too bad. I don't know if Bitcoin's done this, but uh, it was a dollar 69. Now it's at 368, two and a half X, pretty good. How about a year? Not too bad. How about max? Let's see. Still pretty good. 345, and it is above its all time high. So again, congratulations to the Cardano ecosystem. Same thing with uh, Liquid. Uh, over, we'll start with 30 days. Doing pretty good, 438, here it is, 90 days. Eh, 764, still kind of back. One year, oh, I take that back, not too great. <laughs> but again, there's a lot of different things that are in the ecosystem, Cars, Aridas, Ardana, Wi-Fi, doing quite well. And if you really wanna take a look at things, how they're doing as far as dApps and, and so on and so forth, there's a great website, a link in the description, Dapp Radar. And if you want to take a look at all the dApps that are going on, let me search domains. Cardano, see how things are going. Here's all the Cardano dApps. And if you want to, number of unique active wallets, let's just take a look at volume. MinSwap, 9.73, Indigo Protocol, eh. Over the last 24 hours, 100,000. Let's go over 30 days. That's a little better. One more click. MinSwap, 30 days, half a billion dollars. Indigo Protocol, 30 million almost. 20 million for Sunday Swap and 20 million. Now again, if you go through everything, we'll take a look at Ethereum because I know the Ethereum maxis will hate me if I don't show this. But Rob, what about everything that's built on Ethereum? And you do have a point. I'll give it to you. 
in 30 days. Uniswap V3 is 91 billion. Balancer 10.4, one inch number. Those are, those are DEXs. Curve Uniswap, Dodo 1.95. Uniswap, well, let's just, yeah. Polygon Bridge, half a billion. So I think things are catching up, but it's not where it could be. And what you think about that. And then lastly, lastly, some I found very interesting. Top blockchain dApps over all chains, last seven days, sweat, sweat coin. Don't roll your eyes yet. Sweat coin's doing good things. We talked about this on the Dan DGen channel. Volume isn't fantastic, balances, unique addresses, it's still pretty good. And now if we take a look at 30 days, number four out of all the dApps that are out there, number four. And just so you know why I'm excited about it, first of all, it's because I invested into it, that's why, and I'm biased, shocker, is that on September 12th of this year, they are coming to America with their sweat wallet, meaning that you can have the app itself, which had, it was the number one health and fitness app in 58 different countries, I think globally almost it was too, 200 million downloads, not too shabby, and then it has over 13 million different uh, crypto wallets, which is Sweatcoin. And now finally gets to come to America. So we'll see how that all works out. And lastly, everybody was excited yesterday, last night about this Gary Gensler story. And there was a bunch of people, let's call a spade a spade, a bunch of YouTubers out there who were like, Gary Gensler is getting fired. He's resigning and da, da, da. And I'm like, are we in crazy town? That's not going to happen. He's not going to resign yet. He's got a lot of things to do. He's got a lot of people to uh, put in their place and it's not gonna happen. And I did a little tweet and today here it was. And did you know, I found this very fascinating, which is this, the story itself was created by AI and the website itself on crypto alert, it was just registered, when was it? The website domain, the crypto alert was registered at 4.47 PM on June 24th. They ran it through this thing called AI, Ch no, no, it's not what it's called. Uh, 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 zero GPT, where you can put text through and see if it's actually been created by, by AI. And it said it's a 96% match. So this website was created. It wrote a fake article and it was so good that the SEC was forced to comment within 24 hours and said that, no, our guy Gary is not going to, <laughs> it's not going to resign. I found it fascinating of how things move with AI, but Hey, new brave new world. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video and want to spend a little time with me, great. I'm glad to have you. Hit the thumbs up. Consider subscribing. I don't care who you subscribe to, but just like Plan B was talking about, in these next months up to the halving and beyond in 2025, I think we're going to see some pretty big things. Stay alive and thrive to 2025. And that's it.